Hi everyone, my name is Semia and today I'm going to present you to 12 housing optimization tips. As the name says, this is an optimization guide to make your life easier when you build, so I won't talk about glitches in this video. Before we start, be sure you have everything on this toolkit list. The first tip I want to give you is related to floating partitions. I recommend you to use wooden beams instead of stage panels. When I started glitches, I used to take stage panels to help me float, but using any partition simply blocks your camera when in small spaces, so I recommend you to use this strategy whenever you can. My second tip is still related to floating. For a long time, I saw Glitch's tutorial recommending you to actually rotate the item you just floated while you actually don't have to make a rotation movement at all. You simply enter the rotation mode, click on the item once, then another time or another item or in the air and that's it. Now, for the next tip, you might wonder why I asked you to gather an unending journey in the toolkit. If you are familiar with the trick where you leave the estate to reset every floating item that wasn't rotated, then this will save you quite some time, as the unending journey does exactly the same trick. Enter the cutscene mode, leave it instantly, and it will reset everything. This next tip will help you after floating tabletop or wall-mounted items. If you put into your inventory any other item, you will be able to take any other furniture, no matter if they have another item placed on them or not. Now, for the fifth tip, I recommend you to use an item such as the wall tiles so you can pinpoint exactly where you want to float your wall. This technique is very effective with partitions. I saw people using windows and floor marks, but I personally think that wall ties are easier to use and much more precise. You don't have to use any glitch to place them and they are very easy to place and remove. My sixth tip will help you to create seamless walls. You simply need to put your character on first person mode and take the partition at its top and move it. As you can see on the video, the movement of the partition operates very slowly, so you will be able to place your partition as pixel perfect as possible. Just be aware that this tip mainly works with tall partitions, so bye bye right boys! <laughs> For the next tip, you will need the wooden loft and two five ages items. Place them as shown on the video. Try to align the box with each other. Then jump below them. You will see that your character will pop on top of those books until its head and your camera along get stuck in the ceiling Hello there. or the like the floor of the next floor. Uh, this tip will help you to float the partition higher since sometimes your wall shelf can't reach higher due to the height of the ceiling. And yes, I am looking at you, goblet houses. This tip is simple. When you are on whatever floor and want to go back on the main one, just click on move to the front door instead of running back like I used to do. It saves a lot of time actually. For the next tip, it was actually showcased in Eiko's interview last week. This is to create a pixel-free ceiling, but you can also use it when floating partitions and want them to be perfectly aligned at their top or bottom. For example, if you want to create a pattern with a rectangular partition for the ceiling or the floor, then you might want to use this tip. So, you float what you want to float, then you place the potion rack on the wooden loft, then you place it and, well, when you place it, you immediately exit the housing menu as you would do when floating anything. The item will then be moved on top of the potion rack. This trick works with any tabletop table item. This tip will also showcase a glitch, which is the subcommand glitch, but there is a small thing different in mine. In the other glitches video I saw in the past, they show you to go in the keybind menu and give a keybind to the display com subcommand action as well as the confirm action. So you can press them one after another. You display subcommand, then you confirm to place the item. However, I discovered that you only need to press display subcommand twice and the very same thing will happen. This might seem useless to you, but I heard that sometimes pressing confirm doesn't work so you have to do it again while in 
my way, if you can say so, it always works. For the 11th tip, you might have noticed throughout the video that I rotate my items without being in rotation mode, right? Deja vu. Just been in this place um, this is simply a command that I bind in. So you only need to go in the keybind attribution, you go under gamepad and you bind the L2 button and the R2 button. And that's it, you can rotate any item while moving around. My last tip is to help you while building. When you don't know which item would look better, just use the preview furnishing option. This will save you a lot of time. You can also use it to preview the colors of an item, which will actually save you some gills. So instead of coloring everything in pure white and realize afterward that you actually needed the pale gray, Nani? you would notice immediately. Uh, this might sound a bit like not really useful, but not a lot of people use this option actually, so I really recommend you to use it for any reason. Just use the preview furnishing. So that's it for my housing optimization guide. I hope it was useful to you guys, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or you can reach me also through Discord. So, à la prochaine!